Hello, you're watching Every TV, and welcome to English News and News Broadcast. These are the major headlines. <music> President Issa Saforki on two-day working visit to Sudan. <music> Eight patients diagnosed positive for COVID-19 in tests carried out today. <music> the global COVID-19 cases accelerates. And the Democratic Republic of Congo declares end of Ebola outbreak. The local news. President Issa Safroki this morning departed to the Sudan for a two-day working visit. Upon arrival at the Khartoum International Airport, President Issa and his delegation were accorded warm welcome by the President of the Sudan's Sovereign Council, General Abdel Fattah al-Burhan, Foreign Minister of Saudi al-Mahdi, and other Sudan's officials and dignitaries, as well as Mr. Issa Ahmed Issa, Eritrean Ambassador to the Sudan. President Issa Safarki and General Abdel Fattah al-Burhan in the afternoon hours held a meeting at the al Jumhuriya State House. In their meeting, the two leaders reaffirmed commitment of both countries to further consolidate their bilateral ties rooted on common history and shared values. The two leaders further agreed to strengthen their efforts and the implementation of the agreements of cooperation reached between the two countries in the political, economic, social, security, and military sectors. The two heads of states also urged for continuation of the consultative forum launched by leaders in the region and which remains vital for bolstering bilateral ties through a wider Horn of Africa framework of cooperation. They also exchanged views on current regional issues of interest to their two countries. President Issa Zafurki also conducted a meeting this afternoon with Prime Minister Abdullah Hamdok and emphasized the importance of regional integration in the Horn of Africa as the challenges that each country is grappling which are interlinked with and influences developments in the other countries. President Issa Zafurki and Prime Minister Hamdok also stated that such a framework will be critical for optimal utilization of the region's huge human and natural endowments. They agreed to focus on few and concrete projects to consolidate Eritrea-Sudan bilateral ties within the regional framework. The presidential advisor, rather delegation, included Mr. Osman Saleh, Minister of Foreign Affairs, and presidential advisor, Mr. Yemane Gabab. We have an announcement from the Minister of Health. Eight patients have been diagnosed positive for COVID-19 in tests carried out today at quarantine centers in Omhadra 5, Aligudu 1 in the Gashbaka region and Asmara 2, Central region, respectively. On the other hand, seven patients who have been receiving medical treatment in hospitals in the Ansaba 3 and Northern Red Sea 4 regions have fully recovered and are being discharged from these facilities. The total number of recovered patients to date has accordingly risen to 3,503, while the number of deaths stands at 12. The total number of confirmed cases in the country to date has also increased to 3,681. Minister of Health, Asmara, May 4, 2021. The residents of the six villages of the Adifakai administrative area, Hagga subzone, are conducting an encouraging popular campaign with a view to boost agricultural production. According to Mr. Adris Ali Adris, administrator of Adifakai administrative area, the popular campaign includes construction of terraces and water division schemes as well as preparation of land for cultivation in the coming rainy season. The popular campaign that started in March is expected to be accomplished at the end of May, and so far, terraces over 350 hectares of land has been constructed, pointing out that the land in their area is fertile and that with the popular campaign, they expect to collect bountiful harvest. The residents call for machinery assistance as well as other farming materials. Adifakai administrative area comprises six villages and is resident to 2,341 people. About 300 members of the Athletics Federation of the Central Region conducted water and soil conservation activity. According to Mr. Abraham Eyob, member of Agricultural Office in Asmara Subzone and its environs, the members of Athletics Federation constructed half hectare of terraces in Bit Girgish, stating that construction of terraces and water division schemes is very significant for controlling soil erosion. Mr. Isa Nitarab and Mr. Isaias Asafau, members of the Federation, commended that strong participation the members demonstrated in the popular campaign.
Now back with international news. After a short break. Welcome back. India's government is facing growing pressure to impose a nationwide lockdown to stem the devastating coronavirus surge that has overwhelmed hospitals and markets. Prime Minister Nadira Modi's government widely criticized for allowing religious festivals and political gatherings attended by hundreds of thousands of largely unmasked people is reluctant to impose a national lockdown for fear of economic fallout. With 3.4 million active cases today, India recorded more than 357,000 new infections over the previous 24 hours, while deaths rose by more than 3,400. This is according to the country's health ministry. The European Union's medicines regulator has started a rolling review of the COVID-19 vaccine produced by Chinese pharmaceutical company Sinovac to assess its effectiveness and safety, marking the first step towards its possible approval for use in the 27-nation bloc. The Democratic Republic of the Congo declared the end of an Ebola outbreak that infected 12 people in the eastern province of North Kivu and killed six of them. The outbreak was contained using Mark's Ebola vaccine, which was given to more than 1,600 of the patients' contacts and contacts of contacts. This according to the International Medical Charity Doctors Without Borders. The cases were genetically linked to the 2018-2020 Ebola epidemic that killed more than 2,200 people, the second highest toll recorded in the disease's history. The virus can remain in certain body fluids, including semen of a patient who has recovered from the disease, even if they no longer have symptoms of severe illness. Libya's top diplomat has called for the departure of foreign forces and mercenaries from Libya as it heads towards elections later this year. Nijila al Mokoshi, Foreign Minister of Libya's interim government, urged Turkey to implement UN Security Council resolutions demanding the repatriation of more than 20,000 foreign fighters and mercenaries from Libya. Her remarks came at a joint news conference with the Turkish Foreign Minister Numovulik Kovolsoglu, and the visit in Tripoli was conducted along with Defense Minister Hulushi Akar and other top military and intelligence officials. Kosogulu responded by saying that Turkish forces were in Libya as part of a training agreement that was reached with the previous Libyan administration. That's it for today. Thanks for watching.